Every time I go on a trip, I pretty much have everything planned. Well, at least the places I want to visit. I plot out the route I'm going to take, how far it is from one place to the next, or if I should take the local transportation in the city or walk. Well, majority of the time we walk, but today we should have definitely used the tram system, which I found out now is called the Lewis. Anyway, like I said in my last video, today is going to be the most tiring day of this whole trip. That's because we decided to walk. So just around the corner from our hotel, next to the Spire of Dublin, we walk through Henry Street, which is by the way one of Dublin's primary shopping streets. This was developed by Henry Moore, who was an Earl in 1661 to 1676. Although the streets is lined up with popular stores, we didn't come to shop today. We really came here for this. This is the Moore Street Market. It's Dublin's oldest and famous open air food market. See, I'm not really sure when the market opens, but if it were, I'm sure you'll see a lot of vendors selling fruit, vegetables, and all sorts of goods along this street. Well, this market has been featured in films as well as books, and it also played a part in the Easter Rising when Irish volunteers surrendered to the British forces in 1916. Everything's closed right now. Yeah. Butcher shop. We're actually looking to have breakfast, so. We decided to check out this market first. Um, so they're still closed. There's nothing here. I'm not sure if the market is still closed or it just ended. I'm assuming it's still in the process of opening. See, it's still closed. Alright, let's go find breakfast. Oh, uh, that's like tripe. What is this? Liver? This, are, this is like pork. Oh my god, what is that? Oh, that's a rabbit. Is that rabbit? Damn, that's a rabbit. I was hoping to have breakfast here, but I think even if the market was open, I don't think we'll see any vendors selling cooked food here. I believe they only sell fresh produce. Anyway, coming from the market, we headed to this place. This is called the church. It used to be the St. Mary's Church built in the 18th century until it closed in 1964. For many years, it remained dilapidated and run down, but in 1997, it was restored and opened in 2005 as a bar. The church only got its name in 2007 when the building was acquired by new owners. Today, it's a cafe, bar, and restaurant all in one, and we're hoping to get some food here for breakfast. Um, I read that they turned this into like a bar or something. Well, we're gonna try and go in and see what's inside. It's actually like a restaurant too. See that? They also serve like food and stuff here. Look, they're still closed. They open at 10.30. Alright, there's another spot here on my app. I think it's somewhere here. This is pretty cool. It's like a train diner. We have this a lot in the U.S., the Midwest, I think. I don't know what they serve there, but um, we're going to a different restaurant, though. Since it serves one of the best uh, breakfasts here in Dublin. But first, we're going here. We're going to see if it's open, the National Leprechaun Museum. I don't know, I think it's still closed. Look, there's a key in there. There's really a National Leprechaun Museum. And it's actually one of the places we're going to visit yeah, today. We thought of seeing this first before we had breakfast, but since it's still closed, we decided to see it later in the afternoon. Officially, our plan was to eat breakfast at the market or the church, but since they're both closed, we ended up having breakfast here. You know, I misread my app. I thought it said best breakfast in Dublin, but it's actually best coffees in Dublin. Anyway, for breakfast, I got myself the bacon and cheese sandwich, and for her, she got the mushroom and kale. As for my drink, I got the standard black tea, and of course she got coffee. I'm actually glad she did, because after all, this place has one of the best coffees in Dublin. I know I mentioned this many times, I'm not really a tea drinker, I just drink it when I travel, because it helps soothe my stomach with all the eating I do. But this is the first time I added sugar on my tea, and I didn't like it. I mean, I thought I would, but I actually got used to drinking tea just as it is. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of different. I think I like it bitter. So this is the bacon and cheese sandwich. It's griddled bacon with mature cheddar, rocket and mustard creme fraiche, and I added a fresh egg that doesn't look real at all. It kind of looks like those gummy egg candies. 
And about the bacon, you know, every time I hear bacon, I think of those thin fried crunchy strips. But here when they say bacon, it's always thick and juicy, just like the Canadian bacon. Anyway, this is the mushroom and kale. It's roasted mushrooms, sauteed kale, spiced mascarpone with toasted seeds, and tahini salsa on rye bread. Oh, and a poached egg on top. I wasn't sure about this one because I've never heard anything like this before. But the roasted mushrooms and poached egg look really good. Looks nice. I have no idea why I did that to the egg. Normally I just let the bread squish it naturally. Ham and cheese sandwich is a very common type of sandwich, but its origin is unclear. Although I read that a guy by the name of Patrick Connolly, who was an 18th century Irish immigrant to England, sold a sandwich just like this. And because of that, the sandwich was called Connolly, and to this day, people in some parts of the UK still call it that. Mm. It's actually good, the bread is pretty good. Yeah. I can't taste the meat yet. Yeah, I think it's the same. But the bread is really good. It's like a certain like a taste on it. Oh, uh, the sourdough on the bread. It's really good. The sandwich was actually good. The bread like I mentioned had a certain taste to it, almost like a sourdough bread, and the ham or bacon was tender and juicy. But for me what really made this sandwich good was the egg. As always we both shared our food, so I gave her a piece of my sandwich and she gave me a huge piece of hers, which I'm not complaining by the way. Let's try this out. I mean, the, the mushroom smells good. Oh wow. Wow. Really tasty. Mm. Mm. This dish is better. The kale. Yeah. Your dish is like really tasty. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to like that. All the flavors in that mushroom and kale dish worked well together. Especially the kale. I don't know if it's the sauce, but I don't remember the last time I ate kale. It's not that I don't like it, it's just that it's rare for me to find a dish with kale in it. The kale is pretty good. Apparently the whole one getting married. I don't know. It has a good taste to it too. It has a good taste to it. But the kale is um, man. No, it's good. It should be easy for him because he's like born right in but he's So after that surprisingly good breakfast, just a block away from the restaurant, we walk to this abbey. It's called the St. Mary's Abbey. It was founded in 846 by this Irish king whose name I can't pronounce. Of course it didn't look like this before, but you can just imagine the history surrounding this abbey. Unfortunately, I don't have time to talk about it on this video because this is the only clip I have of it. And according to a guy we met here, this abbey has been closed for many years now. Go on. Is this the St. Mary's Abbey? The church is closed for like eight years now, we were told. Um, that's unfortunate. We wanted to see it. Oh well. Right, let's go to the next stop. I just read that the abbey has been closed since May of 2015 and its history is quite amazing. I wonder why they had to close it for that long. Anyway, from the abbey, we headed to this street. This is the Henrietta Street, named after the wife of Charles Fitzroy, who was the second Duke of Grafton. This street has been used as a location for films and TV productions, probably because it's the earliest Georgian street in Dublin. It was constructed from the mid-1720s all the way to the 1750s. The houses surrounding this street has been home to wealthy people in the 18th century, but during the 19th and the 20th centuries, the houses here were used as tenements. And based on what I've read, 835 people were living here in poverty in just 15 houses. Today the street is being restored and one of the houses here was opened as a museum. Yeah. 
there's really nothing here but just the street okay so we're gonna go to our next destination from here I think we're going to a park I'm not sure um, we'll see the park is actually opposite of where I'm walking it's located at the end of Henrietta Street going through the Kings Inn so um, from Henrietta Street which is right here behind me we're gonna go through here and going to the park by the way the king's inns or the honorable society of king's inns as we walk through it is actually the oldest law school in ireland which was established by king henry the in 1541. this is the king's inns park there is really nothing special about this park except that it's obviously part of the school the reason why we came here is really not for this or the school but for a specific landmark that's slowly becoming a popular tourist attraction located here inside the park and it's called the hungry tree there is a place here called the Hungry Tree. Um, it's like a sculpture of, a, of chairs or like a tree eating a bench or something. I'm not sure. But it's supposed to be here somewhere. So um, the tree should be here somewhere. But there's this little dog right here. Look at him, he's all slow. Come on, boy. You can make it, boy. Hey, boy. <laughs> okay, so I found a hungry tree. It's right here. It's hungry because it pretty much ate the bench or something. Coming here, I thought it was a sculpture, but it's actually a tree eating a bench. Anyway, they call this the hungry tree as you can see why. The tree is estimated to be around 100 years old. And over the decades, as the tree grew, it slowly engulfed the bench sitting next to it. And because of this, the tree became something of a tourist attraction and was listed as one of the country's heritage trees by the Tree Council of Ireland. I'm gonna try and sit on it. It's not wet. There you go. Check it out. <laughs> it's supposed to be a landmark or something. It's, it's kind of comfortable. From here, we're gonna go to um, the old Jameson's distillery, the whiskey, it's the whiskey distillery, and uh, it's heading that way. One of the things Ireland is known for is their whiskey, and the Jameson whiskey is probably the most popular of them all. This building right here is the original site where the Jameson Irish whiskey was distilled in 1780 until 1971, when the production was moved to the new Middleton distillery. Today it's become a visitor center that provides tours and whiskey tasting. Alright, so we're at the Jameson's Distillery. Which is right here. Um, there, you can see it. We're not gonna go there yet. We're gonna go in here because there's like a marketplace here somewhere. Um, we're gonna go in there. Yeah, so it's like a walkway. Oh, there it is. It's like a chimney right there. But this place is like a restaurant, right? There's a whole bunch of restaurants. It's just a little walkway. Oh look, there's food in there. Okay, coming through there, which I found out is called the Duck Wing. It's um, I'm right in front of this. This right here is the Jameson Chimney. It was once used by the distillery, and now they turned it into an observation deck with a 360 degree view of the city. From here, there's supposed to be a plaza right here. This is the Smithsfield Plaza, also known as the Smithfield Square or the Smithfield Market. It used to be an open marketplace in the 17th century. Now it's a public square where events are held and most significantly the Smithfield Horse Fair. I'm really here for the um, Jameson's Distillery. Now I don't know if we're gonna go in there. Are we gonna go in? Let's just check it out and see if it's worth it to go in. I don't feel like drinking some whiskey right now. Okay. You want to drink whiskey? <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure once we go in there, we're gonna drink some whiskey. Let's try. Let's check it out. This, this is Jameson's Distillery right here. Like I said, this is where they originally distilled the Jameson whiskey, and now it's a visitor center dedicated to show the history and making of the famous drink. They have various types of tours going on here. Of course, all of them are about the whiskey. 
Anyway, as we enter the building, the first thing you'll see is a bar that I'm pretty sure sells only Jameson's whiskey. <laughs> I think that's uh, Jameson right there. At this point, I was having second thoughts of drinking whiskey and going on a tour because I felt it was too early for me. But since we're already here, we checked out what kind of tours they offer. We thought about taking a tour, but as you can see, most of the tours are roughly an hour long. And if I remember correctly, the next tour starts in half an hour. So we decided it's best to just come back here later that night because we still had a lot of places to see. So we left and headed to this church. This is the St. Michael's Church. It's an Anglican church dating back to 1686, although a previous chapel stood here in 1095. The church doesn't look as impressive as we expected it to be, especially considering it's more than 300 years old. But the reason why we came to see this church is for the crypt or the vault which contains mummified human remains. And to see it, we had to take a guided tour. What's the date today? The 16th, thank you. I know, this So we're gonna sign. People are We decided to take a tour here for about uh, seven euros. Alright, we signed our names. Let's go inside. Just like the exterior of this church, the interior looks very basic. I was actually preparing myself to be blown away with sculptures, marble floors, and walls painted with frescoes, but instead we got this. It just wasn't as amazing as I expected it to be. I mean, compared to all the churches we've been to, the most popular plate, like thing here in this church is the crypt, but unfortunately, I don't think I can film. But, um, it kind of has this weird smell. It's like um, an old, old wood, wooden smell. But this is, I always see this in churches. This organ was built in 1725 and, cool. and was said to have been played by it's George Frederick Handel, here. who was a famous composer, but there are no supporting evidence or it's documents that much. he did. Below the organ, I found this shelf containing books and artifacts probably relating to the church. I should have at least scanned through some of the books in there because now I have no idea what it's about. I guess I was more interested about the tour. Basically, we're sitting here right now and we're waiting for the tour guide to come. He's going to take us to the crib. Um, I'm going to try and film. Hopefully, they'll allow me to film. But, oh, someone's coming. Oh, this is the crib. Any of you been to see the crib before? No. Nope. Good. This is part two. Oh. The mummies are in part one. We will Ooh. see them. Okay. But some of part two may not make sense till we go all the way around. Okay. Just hang in. Okay. Careful on the steps. She's the greatest. Okay. Or the most foolish. <laughs> wow. Well done. The first thing is, this crypt is much bigger. The wall that was at the end of the other crypt mm -hmm is relatively modern and if we could get past that wall in the other crypt i think we'd find something like this the thing to see here is the studded coffin on the bottom Ooh. is not on the bottom there's another one in through the gate there are three recent burials cremations the last one was almost three years ago this is the only family that continues to be buried here but any of these families could come today and use them again it's not very likely but it is legally possible and that's part of the reason for not poking around too much technically they're all active <laughs> <laughs> such a character. <laughs> the Lords of Leitrim, see this. aristocrats. Yeah. Oh. You can see that they are because some of the it? coffins yeah. have a crown. But the one that's at the front to the left, all on its own, is very simple. No crown. Mm -hmm. It contains Lord Leitrim III. He was killed. 
assassinated mm. in 1878. Nobody liked him, just like Manchester United, <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> Switzerland, Switzerland, Celine Dion. <laughs> the strange thing is, in here we have the aristocrats at the other end for the finale. Now we can peep. <laughs> the rebels! This is one of the vaults or crypts in this church. Now we're going to the next vault, which actually should have been the first part of this tour. Be careful of the fort tomb. It's big. Okay, thank you. Back to another crib we're gonna go to okay watch your head 